All right, well, it is 6.35 p.m. on Tuesday, October 12th, 2021. Um, good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting of the board to order. Um, I'd like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, first members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Thank you. Uh, Patrick Hanlon? Here. Kevin Mills? Here. Um, Mr. O'Rourke is delayed. He won't be able to join us until a little later. Um, Steve Rivelak? Uh, present, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And Mr. Ford is traveling today, so he will not be with us. Um, Town officials, uh, Rick Pellarelli. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Uh, Vincent Lee, I believe he's <coughs> transferring locations at the moment. Hmm. Um, and I don't think Kelly Linema is joining us tonight. Uh, I'd like to confirm people, <clears throat> or is there uh, someone present? Um, to present uh, 1416 Edgerton Road. I know there was a possibility that they would not be able to attend this evening, so I just want to confirm. Mr. Chairman, I left off with the applicant that if he uh, checked in as um, attending, then mm -hmm. he would go forward with his presentation. Okay. Uh, but if he did not, then he had a uh, death in the family and would like to continue to yep. October 26th. Okay. So he's, he won't be here this evening. We'll, uh, we'll continue when we get to that. Um, it's uh, someone here appearing on behalf of 18 Heard Road. Uh, uh, Gregory Jacobs? Um, yes, Joseph Luna, his architect. Perfect. Uh, on behalf of 125, 127 Webster Street, is Mr. McKenna present? Yes. Good evening. On uh, behalf of 43 Fox Meadow Lane, uh, Benjamin Hathaway? Present, thank you. <coughs> and on behalf of 25 Ottawa Road, uh, Brian Grady? We're here, 24. That's 24, right. thank you. Thanks. Okay. This open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed into law on June 16th, 2021. This act includes an extension until April 1st, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all, public, all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed to continue to participate remotely. Public bodies may continue to meet remotely so long as reasonable public access, of, access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom app with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotony, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodlines of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. 
Uh, the first, I that's the first item on our agenda. The second item is the approval of the decision for 50, 53 Marathon Street. I'm going to uh, hold that until later in the hearing until, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. O'Rourke is able to join us. Um, so that brings us to item number three on the docket. Uh, now turning to the public hearings on tonight's agenda. Here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves and make their presentation to the board. I will then request members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. After the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. So item three on our doc on our agenda for this evening is docket number 3666-1416 uh, Edgerton Road. Um, so Mr. Valarelli, you had noted earlier uh, that due to a death in the family, they have requested a continuance. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. He was gonna try to make it, but I do not see him present at this time. Okay. Um, and so you had said we would be continuing to October 26th? That's correct. Uh, so may I have a motion to continue 1416 Edgerton Road until October 26th at 7.30 p.m.? So moved. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Uh, vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Revelak? Aye. Your votes aye. So we are continued on 1416 Edgerton Road. Brings us to number four on our agenda, which is docket 36618 Heard Road. Appearing for the applicant uh, is Mr. Joseph Luna. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, it's a very straightforward project. We have an existing um, single family house with an open porch. Um, house is currently conforming to setback. However, what we are planning on doing now is taking down the existing open porch and adding a 37 square foot mudroom <laughs> and a new covered porch, which puts, puts us into the front yard setback. Um, we have submitted drawings um, showing the extent of extent of the addition, um, which is roughly nine nine feet two inches wide, and projecting out from the face of the house a total of eight and a half feet, four foot six for the projecting mudroom, and an additional four foot open porch. Um, we are um, providing a, a better proportion front entry um, into the into the house. And we believe that there is no detriment to the neighborhood or the house itself as it's in context with the colonial style. The houses can remain um, a single family house. And we, um, we don't, we believe that um, relief from the zoning bylaws is warranted um, for this proposed project, so. I can't hear you. I'm just going to quickly bring this up on the screen. Yep. Um, so this is the the site plan. So it's just this addition here. At the right, front and, the project, the and the projecting and the projecting with steps. And the projecting <clears throat> porch. That's the existing. Oh, and the projecting porch, right? So this is yep. the existing condition. That's the existing condition. And then this is the. Yeah. Right. So again, four and, and a half. And feet then that, this should be the proposed. The mud room and the right and a wider proportion so it's in more it's in better okay. scale with the house side elevations and that's the front elevation right okay are there any questions from the board Um, Mr. Chair, Steve Revelock. Right. So yes, um, this is this is just sort. This is a basic one. Um, you know, the permit was advertised as a, or this hearing was advertised as a special permit under five three nine A. But um, the application 
materials include a request for a variance. So is, is this a special permit or a request or a variance request? Well, my understanding is that we are within the within the front yard setback. So we will we need to have variance relief for that, not just a special permit. I would just ask Mr. Vallarelli to clarify that. Right. So um, Mr. Rebelak, that's a great question. So at face value, this looks like a variance. Uh, what a lot of applicants don't realize is they made an exception for projections into minimum yards because so many people wanted larger vestibules. So they put a, a caveat, if you will, in there and made it a special permit under its own special section, projections into minimum yards. But okay. if, you did, if you didn't look further into the zoning bylaw, you would take it as a variance. Okay. So it was advertised correctly the applicant filled out the wrong application. So in other words, it is a special permit. It is a special permit. Thank you for their clarification, Mr. Valorelli. You're welcome. Any further questions from the board? None, I'm gonna stop the share on this. And okay, so I'm now going to open the meeting for public comment. Public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing the decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. The chair asks that those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing to please be patient and allow those waiting to speak for the first time to go ahead of them. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the meeting host and you'll be asked to give your name and address and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair and please remember to speak clearly. And once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed for this particular hearing and the board and staff will do our best to show any documents requested. Uh, so with that, um, we have a phone in, uh, number ending in 644. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is Steve Moore uh, on Piedmont Street. Um, I'm sorry I have to call in by phone tonight. I can't do the Zoom and I have no access to any of the documents that you're referring to. So I'm gonna ask you a favor, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I'm a member of the uh, uh, Arlington Tree Committee, and I can't actually find this address on Google Maps. So uh, I'm going to have to ask you, sir, if you could tell me if there are any trees in front of this property that are going to be affected by the uh, extension of the uh, steps or the uh, creation of the mudroom. I believe no. there is a street tree that is beyond far beyond the, this area. I don't think there are any other trees in the front yard. Mr. Luna, are there? Um, no, there's only low shrubs. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would uh, ask the applicant to make sure that when they do the creation of the steps or, or whatever's going on there, they, they use the correct uh, tree protection for the street tree. So uh, any construction equipment or materials are not damaging the critical root zone. Okay. If there's any, if there's any uh, interest, I mean, if there's any um, question about the information of what that is or how far out one has to go, it's available uh, from the, the tree warden in town, Tim Laqueve. Uh, it's also, I believe, on the DPW uh, uh, website. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Anything further? Nope. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, is there any other? Public questions or comments? I see none, so I will close the public comment for this hearing. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I ask one more question? I'm sorry, Steve Moore again. <laughs> yes, Mr. Moore. Well, the reason, the reason I'm bringing it up is I don't know how on the phone to put my hand down ah. and how to put it up. So how, tell me how to put it down. Um, that is a question I can't answer, but I can do it for you. Okay, because uh, if I have multiple comments tonight, you're going to have to do that every time. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Oh, certainly. Um, is there further discussion from the board? 
Um, so the board typically attaches uh, three conditions to uh, special permits. Uh, the first one reads the final plans and specifications approved by the board for this permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, condition number two, the building inspector is hereby notified that he is to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time he determines that violations are present and the inspector of buildings shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw under the provisions of chapter 40 section 21d and institute non-criminal complaints if necessary the inspector of buildings may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1 and condition number three as the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit grant um, as we have done on uh, several cases recently where there have been uh, requests for front yard um, additions of this type. Um, I would like to propose adding a fourth condition, uh, which would read the area of the new porch and enclosed entry is not to be considered within the foundation wall of the building. Uh, the purpose for this condition is the, the, town, the town bylaws treat um, the front building line um, differently than the front of, of other things. And so we just want to make it very clear that as far as the, this grant is concerned, the front of the existing front of the house is the, is considered the front of the building going forward. Um, yes, the foundation that's supporting the small little entrance vestibule is just a crawl space. There's no extension of the basement. No. Yep. Perfect. Not a problem. Anything further from the board? Mr. Revelak. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would propose a condition that the um, covered part of the porch, the open part of it, uh, remain unenclosed. In perpetuity, that's fine. Porch. Now. Unclosed. And that's the four foot projection off of the face of the, of the new mudroom. Perfect. The open portion of the porch shall remain unenclosed. Okay. In perpetuity. So. And then, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. DuPont. Uh, so I just forget are we just leaving the question of street tree protection up to sort of the normal process, or do we ever need to mention that? Um, we typically avoid putting in conditions. For somebody to follow standard procedures we have in the past though and say something along the lines of the board notes that the applicant is to consult we could put something along those lines you can put a note that my my client will co will comply with with all applicable requirements of, of department of public works thank you mr chairman wanted to point out that the threshold for doing something with respect to drawing people's attention to is the tree issues is getting to be low enough that we may want to consider going forward whether or not that should be uh, put into the standard conditions so that we don't have to address them each time. Mm, that's a very good point. Um, so Mr. Revelak, I'm putting it down as ZB, the ZBA notes the applicant is to consult with the tree warden before construction begins. Is that sufficient? I think so. Um, Mr. DuPont should weigh in though. No, I, I, I think oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. DuPont, sorry. No, that, that's okay. Uh, what he, just what he said. Okay. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can, I can offer a comment that may help now and in the future. Yes, please. So the uh, building commissioner has uh, revised the residential building permit application to include a sign off from the tree warden, regardless of whether there is tree issues or not. So uh, that, that sign off sheet is included as part of every residential building permit application. They have to contact the tree warden whether Ooh. trees are involved or not. So going forward, um, the tree issue is covered, if you will. And that application, um, if the members are interested in seeing it, is it is online and a more updated application is at inspectional services. Oh, great. Mr. Chairman, can I make a comment as a member of the uh, tree committee? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Moore. Say yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, um, yes, that please. is excellent news. I believe this is one of the items to come up at our meeting tomorrow night. Um, and so I will uh, definitely make sure it comes up. That, uh, that is excellent. It's something we've been working towards or hoping towards anyway for quite a while. So that will probably minimize my comments tonight, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, so with that in mind, we have our three standard conditions and we have the three additional conditions. Um, is there anything, excuse me, anything further from the board? Seeing none, may I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Um, I move that the application before us for 1800 Road be approved subject to the three standard conditions and the three additional conditions that have just been read, one of them having to do with the open part remaining unenclosed in perpetuity, uh, a second one that the, uh, that the uh, area of the new porch is not con considered within the foundation wall of the building, and the final one relating to the tree. Uh, protection of the tree. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second? Second. Thanks, Mr. DuPont. A vote of the board. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. <coughs> Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Revelak? Aye. The chair votes aye. Uh, the motion for 18 Heard Road is approved with the six conditions. Very good. Um, when should we expect a written decision? Um, Mr. Hanlon? Um, are we, we're meeting again on the 20th. Are we taking up written, written decisions then? I was going to recommend maybe the 26th. The 26th is fine. Is two weeks. So we'll vote on the dis the final language of the decision on the twenty sixth. On the twenty sixth. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank the board for its time and thank you for uh, approving. Have a good evening. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Okay, so this time, um, Mr. O'Rourke is with us. So I am going to return back to uh, um, docket item number two, which is the approval of the decision for 53 Marathon Street, um, <clears throat> which is a, a decision prepared uh, by Mr. Hanlon. And it was submit, uh, submitted to the board last week for review and comments were taken back. Um, were there any additional comments in regards to 53 Marathon? I see none. Um, with that, I would move to approve uh, the final decision for 53 Marathon Street as, um, as amended. Second. I have a second? I just did, second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. 
Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. O'Rourke? Aye. Thank you, sir. And the chair votes aye. So the, the final decision for 53 Marathon Street is approved. Um, Mr. O'Rourke, I appreciate you calling in for that. Um, you are relieved for the rest of the evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This brings us up to item number five on our agenda, docket number 3668-125-127 Webster Street. Um, Mr. McKenna? Yes. So proceed. <clears throat> so basically we're going for, um, we want to raise the, um, we have a two family and we want to raise the roof to be able to allow um, my son and his, my future daughter-in-law to be able to have a little living space up there, uh, particularly a second bathroom and uh, the staircase needs a uh, headroom. So the walls have to go up in order to get those two and basically some living space up there as well. I don't know how much more of this I do. Yeah, it is. So this is the existing attic floor plan, and this is the proposed attic floor plan. Roof plan framing section. These are the existing elevations. And these are the proposed elevations. So I think the first question that has come up is about the size of the space that is being proposed for the attic floor level. Uh -huh. um, I believe it's in excess of 50% of the floor below. Is that correct? That is correct. But it already um, was in um, non-compliance beforehand. Um, the, attic area up there I have written down up there um anyway so it's basically another 30 something square feet of space above what was already in non-compliance from pre from its existing place The other thing, really, is that the building department extension? I'm sorry, what? I was asking Mr. Valorelli if the oh. if that if the building department had come to the same conclusion. Uh, correct. Well, Mr. Chairman, um, the applicant is asking for the um, attic space to clearly be uh, greater than uh, seven feet in height by definition. Um, in more than 50%. So it, it, what the applicant is asking for is in fact a third story by definition. Mm -hmm. But is, just the, the applicant has said that he's only adding 30 square feet, but it looks consi like considerably more than that. Yeah, uh, it's- Just it's, looking- I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, go ahead. I was gonna say, does, does the, do you have a, a, a figure for how much space is being added or what the original space is? I do. So according to the application, the existing space, uh, seven foot um, yep. and higher is 1,084. 
Uh, the additional uh, space to be added to that is an additional 234 square feet. So the total space in the attic will now be 1,318 square feet. The area of the floor below is 1,800 square feet. So uh, just rough calculations, is that 75% or 80%? I'm not sure, but clearly more than 50%. Okay. But at, in its current existing condition, it is already in excess of 50%? According to the applicant, Mr. Chairman, but uh, the building department has no way of knowing that. Okay. Are, are there specific questions from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, <clears throat> I gather from the memorandum of the planning department that there hasn't been a statement uh, filed that explains why it is that the applicant believes that this would qualify for a variance, which I gather is one of the things that's being asked for under the pretty strict standards that we uh, have to administer because they're in the state law and we have very little discretion. And I wonder if the applicant is prepared at this point to uh, provide us with an explanation of why uh, he feels he meets those standards. Well, one is the new um, accessory dwelling unit, which basically this is going to become a place for my son and future daughter-in-law to live. Um, and I, my understanding is that that does not count against the square footage numbers. Um, the utility area in the front is going to be unheated space, and that's where you lose a lot of the attic um, livable floor space. Um, and some and of the, also the variance, the plan that we have constructed also accounts for environmental factors and sustainability factors like um, model of the building, which allow for proper insulation and solar arrays on the roof. Um, so the variance is being sought to also meet spec uh, rather than doing this in a uh, one a, a way that doesn't um, need a variance that doesn't allow for these more environmentally friendly uh, elements that are in the plans. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Alex. Yeah. So one of the one of the things that I'd like to get clear in my head, and again, this is I, I'm I'm going to ask the, the question: Is this you know, this was advertised as a special permit, or it, it, but is it really that or a variance? Actually, I take it back. It was actually advertised as a variance, but is it a variance or a special permit? Um, I mean, I, and I think the, uh, I welcome feedback if, feedback from other board members on this, but to me, the real question is, are we dealing with a pre-existing non-conformity or not? And, you know, by pre-existing non-conformity, meaning that, you know, the applicant, you know, if the applicant can provide drawings from an architect showing that the existing third floor has greater than 50% of the floor area of the second floor at a height of less than seven feet as measured from the floor to the you know, bottom of the rafters, then we can, you know, if it's, if it's already a non-conforming third floor, then, you know, what we're dealing with is an alteration to a non-conforming structure. If the second floor happens to be conforming, then we're you know looking at a variance. And as Mr. Hanlon indicated, they are two completely different sets of criteria. Um, so, like it's although this is you know list advertised as a variance, the application has the you know it has the special permit criteria, you know, in the in the question and answer section. Um, so I. 
Yeah, I, for myself, I, I, I feel a need to get some clarity on that. Uh, this is something we are unclear on, I think, and we have been unclear on. That's We have been told both that it's a special permit and a variance. Um, and I think, do our drawings show the square footage yeah, up there sure. currently? Thank so th this, these are architectural drawings that do show the current, what I think is a non-conforming space that already exists. Yeah, definitely was. So, but of course the rules have changed too because the rules used to be different um, for what was a right. conforming space. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, so I wanna, I have, I have been, actually I can't see you but I can see the statute and I just want to bring home to the applicant what the criteria are for uh, getting a variance. Um, the variance has to find the, the the board would have to find that owing to circumstances relating to soil conditions, shape, or the topography of the land and structures, and especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which the application is located, a literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance or bylaw would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or appellant. And that desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and, and so on. And the hard part is all is this business about soil condition, shape, or topography of the land and structures. A variance is not a thing that we are able to grant just because it would be a good idea to authorize the use. Um, that's the, and and we don't even have authority under state law to vary from this. So, and we usually, and we don't vary from it. So if we, if this is a variance on the basis of what we've been told so far, it's extremely unlikely that we would have the discretion to grant it. And so Mr. Revelak is pointing at a solution, which to my way of thinking at least, and the colleagues may disagree with this, but to my way of thinking, the only potential solution is if this is a special, if this is a special permit. Um, if it is, I wonder if anyone has a view as to whether um, we, as to what to make of the fact that this proposal would extend the nonconformity, or at least in a way it would extend the nonconformity. And I wonder what the theory would be that it would not do that. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So first of all, I want to say that I, I sympathize with the applicants because I, because I think that, can you hear me? You yeah. can. Oh, yeah, okay. So I, I sympathize because I think reading the bylaws is not always an easy task. And as I was trying to get a handle on this, I went to look at the definitions of story and half story and, and so in, in sort of my experience with the board, when we've looked at building on the attic or third floor, you know, we've dealt with it, I think, in terms of what's habitable. And that's, to my mind, where the 50% figure comes in, 50% or, or less under seven feet. And when I look at the definition of story in the bylaw, it says an attic is not deemed a story if unfinished and not used for human occupancy. So I guess the first question is, is anyone occupying the third floor at present? No, not at present. No. Uh, it is a teenager. <laughs> it, right. it, it has been occupied. Sure, um, yeah. This was a family of 14 that built this house. So, so they occupied. So, so when then when we look at the district it's in, and it's the maximum would be two and a half stories. What I, I tend to feel when I'm considering this, and I can be persuaded differently, I guess, but is that the fact that it's there in its present form and it may have more than 50% at seven feet or above is in some ways, to my thinking, not the issue because it's not habitable or it's not hab it's inhabited at the moment. And so then what happens 
is you're talking about converting it to habitable space. And that's where, to me, the half story definition comes in with the 50% or less under the seven, seven feet or, or under. And so that's where I run into the difficulty in trying to interpret this because I do think that I have no idea how many places in town have this same sort of circumstance where you have more than 50% seven feet or above. And, and I think that the intent of the bylaw is to keep these buildings to two and a half stories. And so that's one of the circumstances that I think we certainly find that in the definition of the variance, or it's one of the criteria in the variance, the purpose of the bylaw, and it may well be we would consider that for the special permit. So I, I share some confusion about this under these particular circumstances, but I do think when you're going from unoccupied to occupied, we have to take into account what the bylaw says with regard to the district. And to my way of thinking, it's the 50% or under at the seven feet or above. And so that's kind of my lens for looking at this. I just wanted to share that. So actually one, um, I sort of have a follow-up question and one of the another way of looking at it um not to muddy the waters too much uh 40a section six uh <laughs> yes the accept clause um you know uh, bu -bu -bu, i i had it here yeah so you know to any alteration of a structure begun after the first notice of said public hearing to provide for its use for a substantially different purpose or for the same purpose in a substantially different manner or to a substantially greater extent except where alteration reconstruction extension or structural change to a single or two family residential structural residential structure does not increase the non conforming nature of said structure and there's a, the second one which is basically um, um we're actually hold up let, let me show i'm getting ahead of myself but they um <laughs> yeah let, let me read this again i hate that paragraph can i just say <laughs> yep. basically yeah, I and think that i was going to say but basically there is there is something in there is something in that section and I'll have to go read it again, but uh, whether it is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood and that's, you know, possibly another, mm -hmm. you know, Mr. Chairman, standard. Mr. Chairman, if I could follow up on that a second. Yeah, Mr. Hanley. It's, it's easier to look at the bylaw because it does, the text doesn't run together as much as it does in state law. Um, so there are two rel two potentially relevant provisions. One is that alteration, reconstruction, extension, or structural change to a single or two family residential structure that is completely within the existing foundation walls does not increase the non-conforming nature of said structure. And that at least arguably applies here since, there's, since everything is within the existing foundation walls. Secondly, is even if that doesn't apply, maybe the second paragraph B in 8.1.3 does. No alteration, reconstruction, extension, or structural change to a single or two family residential structure that increases the non conforming nature of said structure shall be permitted unless there is a finding by the Board of Appeals that the proposed alteration, reconstruction, extension, or structural change will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. And if that applies, if, if A applies, then, then this is not an increase in the non-conforming nature at all. If B applies, then there still is a special permit that is relevant here. Uh, but our job would be just simply to find that uh, the change would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood and if that's what the standard is, at least we're we're able to talk about the right things here in order to in order to figure out whether to uh, whether to to approve it. Thank you for bailing me out, Mr. Hanlon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, my sense is this, in a lot of ways, this really hangs on the determination as to whether the existing attic floor is over 50% of the floor below. And if it is already, it's a pre existing non conforming in regards to um, it being a two and a half story building. And if that's the case, then I think the the further extension of that would be governed by the 813B, which is the, the second one that Mr. Hanlon read. Um, but if the existing if the existing attic area is less than 50% of the floor below, then it would be a new nonconformity, um, which is a which would be a variance um, request. So we we certainly we have you know the drawings submitted by the applicant stating that the existing floor um, is more than fifty percent of the floor below, um, but we don't have a specific drawing that sort of demonstrates that. You can. Um... You, you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, uh, you could do the math. Uh, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a um, the width of the house and then the uh, 10, 12 pitch of the roof, and you come up with how far in seven feet comes on the the walls, yeah. and that's how you figure out, and it's over fifty percent because. I believe at the time the house was built, it was seven foot something. It was obviously more. And I think they also stretched it because like I said, the original family that owned this house, um, there were, um, boy, what did I tell you? 14, 14, well, it was a family of 14. I don't think it was 14 children, but so they clearly were using that space as a living space at the time the house was built. And uh, the other question that I have is, the new um, accessory dwelling unit thing, does that negate some of this? So it does not, my understanding, and it was approved by the AG last week. So I <laughs> we're, oh, I we're, 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 we're still getting up to speed on, on what, it, what it means and what it implies. Um, but my understanding is that it doesn't, change the, the building envelope requirements. You're still required to meet um, the requirements that are in the building code. Just the exception is that you are now allowed to, you um, know, the case of a two family, you're allowed to, to add additional units um, that meet the criteria for an accessory dwelling unit. And I apologize, I am not up to speed yet at all on what the requirements are for ADUs, nor how they would be um, approved. Mr. Chairman, I mean, just at the outset, the AD, it would be a by right if it's, if, it's if it's allowed at all. Um, and so coming before us would be sort of premature at this point if the ADU ordinance actually applied. But I, I think that the chair is correct that the ADU really addressed use more than addressed more than it addressed uh, mm -hmm. and did not address the the uh, conformity of structures and and lots. Right. And so well, if, if you have a problem there, then that the ADU doesn't help you. Right. Um, if so, it's currently a two-family house in a two-family zone. If there was an ADU added. It would under town bylaws. It would remain a two-family house. Oh yeah. Um, as far as zoning is concerned, but under state law, it becomes a three-unit structure, which is no longer governed by the residential um, building code. It's governed by the commercial building code, and so there would be additional um, requirements uh, to comply with with the commercial code. And Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, the provision that I, in 8.1.3 that I just read, it only applies to one and two family dwellings. 
So mm -hmm. it gets you into an interesting con conundrum because from our point of view, it would still be a two family dwelling, but the state says not. Absolutely. Excuse me, Mr. Excuse Chair. me, Mr. Chair. Uh, that was more of a curiosity. Our current designs don't actually, and uh, there's nothing about it being a separate unit. The current design does not is not a separate apartment. Just to clarify on that front, it's just extended living space for the second floor. Okay, we were just curious. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, the, the the second floor it does have that sort of entertainment area um, that looks like. It could be converted to a kitchen, but is is certainly at the moment not designated as such. Right. Sure. And obviously, the third floor does not have two means of egress and all the, all the other requirements. So, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, yeah. um, I'm I'm now trying to think about how to go forward um, with this. Um, we we are now sort of doing uh, doing a lot of outside the envelope thinking uh, in in real time on this. Uh, and I'm wondering, I mean, the, the very first thing that we need in order to, let me just sort of break it into two parts as I think the chair previously did. If in fact, the, you, the, uh, this is all that that this is already uh, under the bylaw a three-story house because we've exceeded the half-story limitation. Uh, then uh, we are being asked to basically approve a three-family or a house in a two-family district, and and that would require a variance, and it would be highly unlikely that the board, even if it wished to do so, would be able to grant such a thing. On the other hand, if it's a non-conforming use and presumably a prior non-conforming use, then we think at least that we have some provisions that may apply to a single or two family dwelling that would enable us at least to consider the kinds of arguments that the applicant is making as to why it is that, that this should be approved. The threshold determination we need here is um, whether or not the uh, there's the uh, uh, building is is now in nonconformity. Whether it's already, as far as the zoning ordinance is concerned, a uh, nonconforming use uh, or a nonconforming structure, um, and I don't feel comfortable doing that on the basis of sort of doing the math in our heads. Uh, it seems to me that if we're going to embark in on on something that sort of is a uh, an untested voyage uh, that at the very least we ought to have the application uh, that clearly shows what the situ factual situation is uh, before us. We shouldn't be sort of doing a back of the envelope uh, in real time conversation about it or calculation about it. Um, I think that if if the applicant wishes to pursue and to go in this direction um, that we at least need to have a showing as to why it is that uh, a special permit under 8.1.3 and uh, section six of the state law, um, why it is that would be applicable. And we don't have an application that actually does that. Um, and I'm wondering whether, I mean, it, it seems to me that the right way to proceed at least is to get the basic papers in and maybe to be able to continue this uh, until the 26th, if that's enough time, uh, so that we actually have a record before us that we can relate to. Um, and then we can see what it is that also would give us an opportunity to uh, uh, work out what the legal framework is that we think is applicable, assuming that this is a non-conforming use. Um, but at this point, on knowing what we know now, I feel pretty uncomfortable uh, going forward to make all this up as I go along um, because, you know, it's just like with Indiana Jones, when he makes it up as he goes along, he gets into trouble eventually. And I'd like to try to avoid that. No, understood. Um, yeah, Mr. Revelak. Just one comment and then one question. The, the comment is, although 
you know, with regarding the, you know, just doing the calculations based on the slope of the roof, um, that really doesn't, that doesn't quite follow the definition that we use to measure um, ceiling height for a half story. So it's the distance from the finished floor to the bottom of the, uh, basically the bottom of the rafters rather than to the, you know, surface of the roof or roof or the underside of the sheathing and without knowing how you, there's not enough, I don't think there's enough information on the plans to do that. My question, uh, this is for the applicant. Um, did you receive a copy of the planning department's memorandum for this docket? Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, we're not, we're unclear about what, what you're asking. Okay. I, I'll explain and perhaps Miss. Um, I will bring it up in a second here. Yeah, so basically the dockets that appear before us, our planning department also reviews them and they generally provide a memo, um, you know, with, you know, their opinion on the project and also um, areas where the, they suggest that we as a board focus on. Um, so this is this is this is the one for this docket. We have not received that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's attached to the agenda for tonight. Okay. Where did we get the agenda? Was that in your email? I didn't get it. Was that something that we should have received um, from the planning department? So typically it's attached to the to the um, Agenda. Um, get either one of those things. All I got was a okay. piece of paper that told me the time and the the twenty seven digit number for getting in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Rick, can you go ahead and email this to them? Sure, uh, Bruce. I'll do that right now. Sure. Um, uh, Mr. Revelak, was there a specific was there a specific thing in here that you had wanted to reference? Nothing specific, just more um, you know to just uh, bring to the applicant's attention some of the questions that the planning department raised. Uh, you know, they're effectively at, I think they're at the bottom, but mm -hmm. um, you know they also had questions about the dimensions and whether the uh, building was in compliance with the definition of half story. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. In, in looking at that, one thing that, that, that the applicant will wanna keep in mind is that the planning department memorandum is based on the assumption that what the applicant needs is a variance and we have at least been discussing the possibility that there's another way to proceed and the planning department didn't know about that. So when you read this, there's, there will be things in there that, that are surprising because they wouldn't have written it quite the same way if they were reacting to the conversation we've had tonight. But if you just look at the, at the specifics, the facts, the the questions they have about the various filings and so forth, that's important information that would need to be corrected. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So, and I would like to refer, if you can scroll down to the bottom where it has the variance criteria, you had them there a moment ago. Um, is that right? Maybe it's it's up a little bit. Okay. Um, so there there's a section in there, and I apologize because I lost it. I saw it at some point where it might be on the front page, if you would. Um, yeah. So in the last bullet, it says that the applicants completed forms for a special permit. However, the request to create the non-conforming third floor cannot be accommodated through a special permit. And I, I think that that's what's sort of troubling everyone is characterization of this non-conformity on the third floor, because I, I 
I too am unclear. I mean, I think that the, the variance, if the applicant looks at the criteria, you'll see that it's actually quite difficult to satisfy those four criteria. And then I think, however, the planning department has given us a sense of what they're thinking by saying that it would be a non-conforming third floor. And that's part of what I know I have to ponder when it comes to how to treat this, even if we go through 8.1.3. So I just wanted to draw the applicant's attention to that portion of the current memo from the planning department. And then, you know, see if we can address that in the next meeting um, appropriately. That's it. Thank you. Um, I would, at, yes, please. Um, I, yeah, I guess I just wanted to clarify and make sure that we are over here on the same yep. page because we did get a last, we got sort of got a last minute suggestion to fill out the variance. Um, yep. We pulled out the special permit criteria. Um, and so I guess just um, when we're looking at what we're trying to do, you know, there are neighbors around us that have almost a identical projects to what we're trying to figure out how to do. So I think that's just what we're, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that so there was the a change in the have a full understanding. Of what okay. So the, the bylaw was changed um, within the last couple of years. So uh, it used to be that the, the calculation was done at an elevation of seven foot three instead of seven foot zero. And it, basically created a condition where you could, um, because the ceiling height only had to be seven feet uh, under state code, it created a condition where you could actually create a lot more volume under the roof um, and be in both in conformance with the building code and the state code, but it did not conform with what the intent was of a two and a half story. And so there have been a couple of revisions to the bylaws um, to lower that and to also to set some criteria on what roof slopes are, are um, allowable. And so some of those um, that, are, you know, that appear to really be almost the entire third floor raised up under uh, you know, back to back uh, shed dormers, um, you know, that's, that's not the intent of, of the two and a half story zoning and the town is, is actively trying to uh, get away from that um, that uh, that wholesale appearance, and really sort of try to make it appear more like two and a half stories rather than a full three. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, planning department memo was sent to uh, Mr. McCann. We should have it in his email. Thank you. Um, at this point, I would like to um, open the meeting for public comment if there is comment on this project. Um, so if, if there's any members of the public who would wish to comment on this, um, on this hearing, you can raise your hand using the, the raise hand button on the participants tab, or if you're on phone, you can dial star nine. Is there, are there any who wish to comment on this application? Going once, going twice. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment period for this hearing. Um, so certainly from the discussion from the board, it sounds like um, there's a desire to continue this um, most likely until the 26th. And there are certain things that we would like to clarify. Um, but I think the most, the most critical is to get um, using the definition in the zoning bylaws, get an accurate measurement for what the existing area is um, on the attic floor uh, between the finished floor and the underside of the existing roof structure to determine what that area actually is, because that will that will determine if it's if existing it's over fifty percent, then um, it's a pre-existing non-conformity and. Then we we treat that differently than if it's under fifty percent, um, which would be 
uh, be conforming. So um, I would ask the applicant if they could work with, uh, with Mr. Valorelli to um, come up with a figure for the existing area of the attic floor, um, because that will really be the determinant for, for how the board needs to proceed. Yes. Um, and then I had a couple of other comments I had just wanted to pass along as well. Um, go ahead, I'm gonna bring back up, whoops, the package. This one. Um, so on the proposed elevations, so um, there's not a lot of alignment between what's going on on the third floor and on the second floor. I don't know if there's any way to make the windows feel less out of alignment. Um, I know this window here is over well, a restroom. Actually, I'm sorry. That so actually is, is going to line up with the other two. He just okay. draw it that way. Okay. And yeah. the, and the uh, stairway window, the tall one on the over yep. the that one also lines up. I mean, the stair goes straight up. The window is going to go straight up. Perfect. Exactly what I was going to mention. Um, there's also there's a door. Yeah. That is up about four feet. It's that that actually was a previous. I we were going to. Um, that was for if we had a rental unit, they were going to exit through that door. Mm -hmm. We've ended up not renting anything. It just as a fan, we are just a multi generational family in the house. Okay. And so we all use the other exit. So that actually is going to go away and just become a window. Okay. Just want to make sure nobody accidentally fell out. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's screwed shut. <laughs> and there's a couch in front of it. <laughs> Excellent. Um, there's a park. There's a parking space between that door and the street, um, but that's a, which is basically a front yard parking space. But I think it's pre-existing, so I don't. That's not under our jurisdiction. We basically have five parking spots out there. Okay. Um, and then I think so. We would want to have. We would want to basically can so. Well, we discussed, we discussed the windows, we discussed that door, uh, we discussed getting an accurate measurement of the third floor area, um, and then just updating the information sheets, um, both the dimensional sheet and uh, the zoning compliance sheet, just to, so that all those numbers are current and up to date. Yeah, I believe all those are all set, but. Um, yeah, I, from my understanding, the only thing that we're missing is the original like existing livable floor space on the third floor. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, also we do have the form 8.13 for the special permit as well. So I'm not sure, and we'll just make sure that that's in the file since we got told to switch to the variance, but we'll, it sounds like that's what we should. No, I think you have both. They you, I turned in both. I turned in mm -hmm. the special permit first and then I just turned in the variance. So you have all the forms for both things. Okay. Just in case any of the numbers change as a result of measuring the, the upper floor. Right. Um, okay. Then that revision would just carry through. Was, are there, is there anything else that the board would want the applicant to consider ahead of coming back? Seeing none. Um, I have a motion. Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Um, I move with the applicant's consent, I guess, uh, to continue this hearing until a date certain of October 26th at 7.30 or as soon thereafter as it can be heard. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Can I have a second on that? Second. Second, thank you, Mr. Mills. Uh, is that acceptable to the applicant to continue to the 26th? Yes. Yes, can I just 
Uh, so basically, we, the main thing to focus on is just getting that that existing number correct in order to try and move to the special permitting or or find a the way variance. the variance or just, just figuring out whether or not the which which applies working with uh, Mr. Varelli, um correct Valorelli. Yeah, exactly. That that's really sort of the critical thing. So we know exactly what we're deciding on. Okay. All right. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we were clear. Uh, so Mr. Keaton, uh, with your permission, I'll send Mr. McKenna a list of what the board is looking for. Uh, okay. I'll copy you on it uh, just to uh, make sure I didn't miss anything, but I think I have it. Uh, okay, so perfect. We don't take any more time uh, from the hearing tonight. So Mr. McKenna, just look for your email. I'll recap yep. that for you. All right, thank you. Great. Okay, and then just, uh, just need the board to vote on the continuance motion. Uh, so Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Revelak? Aye. The chair votes aye. We are continued on 125, 127 Webster Street. Thank right. you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. We will see you soon again. Yeah. Yes. Um, this brings us to item number six on our agenda, docket number 3669 uh, 43 Fox Meadow Lane. Um, and um, Benjamin Hathaway, I believe, is here. Present. Please, please tell us what you would like to do. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.39. Again, projections into minimum yards. Um, similar to Mr. Luna's request, um, I'm looking to construct an addition uh, of a front porch extending the width of the to be renovated house. Um, I'm on a corner lot in an R0 zoning district. Um, I'm looking to build a couple of uh, covered decks and a foyer, uh, approximately 189 square feet in size. And that, you know, puts us into the, uh, the front yard setback, um, you know, reducing it from the current 25.6 feet to 20.3 feet. Um, you know, the, the purpose of the project is to improve the convenience, uh, the safety, and the aesthetic of the, uh, the to be renovated structure. And I, I brought my architect along with, and, and he can comment on some of the, uh, some of the aesthetics if, if you folks feel it's necessary. Sure. Um, if Mr. Preston would like to go ahead. Hi there. Can you hear me? I can. Would you like me to bring up the drawings? Uh, sorry, do you want me to bring them up or you have a copy? I, can, I have them here. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. And do you have the existing photographs in the beginning? Start with, I have the application. There should be existing plans as well. I do not have photographs. Mr. Chairman, the uh, there are a couple of photographs attached to the planning department memo. If that's at all helpful. I suppose I could describe it. Oh, okay. Go ahead and open that. Share and then share the memo. Next photos. There should be some photos of the existing home. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, you're breaking up quite a bit. In the corner. Um, these are the photographs we have of the Perfect. property. 
Mr. Preston would like to continue. So uh, the bottom, top, bottom and top photographs show the existing stairway coming up to the front door, front entrance. Uh, currently, there's no mudroom. You enter in a typical standard house, stairs straight up, living room off to the left. And so this addition on the front of the house will give them more uh, living space, uh, uh, what we're calling a mudroom, to then come up the side stair, if you could flip back to the proposed. That's good, the, the plan on the right uh, shows new stair up from the left side of the existing house up to a uh, new deck. And the front door is now uh, perpendicular to the street instead of parallel. And you walk into that uh, new first floor expansion into the house. And then off to the right side is a uh, new raised deck uh, flush with the deck on the left side. And could you uh, flip to the perspectives once more? It's wrong direction. And you can see their perspective on the left side, a roof covering everything uniform. Did you want me to describe the second floor addition as well or just the front porch? Um, I think just the, the front porch, I believe, is the only piece that is before us. So I think that that's all we need. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there, I'm going to go ahead and stop the share on this. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Back and forth. Seeing none, um, I will quickly open the hearing for public comment. Um, again, as in the past, if you're interested in commenting, please use the raise hand button um, under the participant tab, or if you're dialing in, dial star nine. Going once, going twice. Seeing none, I will close the public comment hearing for this hearing. Um, so I think this, this is a very nice proposal. Um, the, we have for conditions, um, for approval, I think that we have the, the standard three that we had read before. Um, I would also want to add the, the one that I had um, presented for Heard Road, but also the one that Mr. Revelak had prepared for Heard Road um, in regards to keeping the, the existing foundation wall of the house remains the what's considered the foundation wall as far as the bylaw is concerned, and that the porch, the unenclosed porches are not to be enclosed. Is there That's any acceptable. other discussion from the board? Perfect, thank you. Um, one one question, Mr. Chairman. We've made yes. some small modifications to um, the uh, foundation footprint in the back that would not impact any of the setbacks or you know have to come before this committee. Is it okay mm -hmm. if we submit plans where the um, the the um, the the front footprint, which is before this committee, remains mm -hmm. exactly the same, but you know there's some modification to the back. Um. I, that doesn't pose an issue for me, Mr. Valarelli. Does that impact our decision at all? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the back uh, addition is by right. Needs okay. no special permission at all. Okay. For clarifying. Anything further from the board? <coughs> With that in mind, may I have a motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I move approval of the uh, Fair Meadow Road application uh, with the three standard conditions and the two additional conditions that have been read into the record. Second. Have a second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. 
Any questions? Okay, all those in favor, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Revlack? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That is approved with the with the stated five conditions. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Congratulations. Appreciate Thank it. You. When, uh, uh, again, with you know the the written confirmation, can I expect to uh, receive that at the same time as Mr. Luna on the twenty sixth? Mr. Hanlon, uh, it's my practice to try, and as the board knows, I do not always succeed in getting the. Uh, decisions written and presented to the board at the hearing after uh, the one in which the vote, initial vote is taken. So I'm expecting to get this one before you on the 26th. Excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And the next item on our agenda, item number seven is docket 3671, 24 Ottawa Road. Brian Brady, I believe, is here. Good evening. Thank you for your patience through all this. Um, please tell us what you would like to do. First of all, uh, thanks to the committee for your careful consideration on these here. And Mr. Chairman, would you be able to continue sharing your screen as you've been doing so I could we could run through this? Absolutely. As you know. Okay, great. So the job that we're seeking relief for, it's a... Uh, we have, we're in the R1 district. We have a, um, a single story open porch that we're hoping to raise and use that for, uh, footprint, keep that front yard setback at 23.9, but extend it to the sides of the home um, and go up for a second story uh, addition on top of that. Uh, and in addition, we're, we're looking to add a mudroom that does exceed the 25 square feet um, the issues are that we're seeking a special permit for. One is uh, usable open space, and the other one is the lot coverage. Uh, the reason we're seeking this relief, we have a growing family. Our third child uh, is currently sleeping in our room. It's, it's, we're, we've outgrown the, the, the dwelling. Um, and we have a tiny plot that is non-conforming sort of on, in many ways, three of the four sides, the side yard setbacks are non-conforming. Our open space is non-conforming. Our front, we have, yeah, it's, it's, it's a small lot. We love it here. We have a real sense of community and we care for the people around us and these families and kids that are the same age as our kids and we really want to stay, but we're, We've outgrown our space. Um, and there are allergies in the family. We're looking to have a mudroom that fits our three kids. Uh, the 25 square feet doesn't really allow, a, a, if it's three and a half feet off the foundation wall, it doesn't really allow a full-size door to even open. And we have three kids who we're trying to fit in a space or so looking for a slightly larger mudroom than the 25 square feet uh, that is that would be by rights. Um, yeah, so we have allergies in the family and dirty shoes and pollen on jackets in our living room space. Uh, we're looking to try and uh, isolate that into a mudroom. Um, a lot of care was put into creating uh, a design to really optimize, you know, adding some more beauty, uh, keeping the, the aesthetic of this, the existing streetscape, but also adding just some more space with this enclosed mudroom that would be flush with the neighbors uh, sort of in the, the sort of rhythm of the street as planning has weighed in uh, about it, it would not be exceeding what the what the current setbacks are along our street um, and the foundation line right and then the the we'd be doing some foundational plan uh, plantings and landscaping adding adding a new walkway trying to beautify the space um, and again the the 23.9 at the corner, the front left corner, the existing front yard setback that is slightly non-conforming, we would be maintaining that uh, if we go to the sides of the house, uh, but it would just be going into the front yard setback, further non-conforming with the mudroom itself. Um, and I saw planning did weigh in. Um, they, they brought up some good points that it does maintain the consistency of the rhythm 
uh, with the other structures on Ottawa. In terms of massing and appearance, it would remain similar to the existing structures. There was a point, um, the plans that we submitted did have shutters and there was a point in the planning that that would add some aesthetics uh, because it had shutters. We did decide not to go with shutters because both sides adjacent don't have shutters, directly across the street don't have shutters and we would like to not have that. And I don't know if uh, the existing plans, I, I heard the caveats, The once the plan is in that that is sort of as all right, so they don't have shutters. Okay, all right, great. There was something in the planning report that shutters to be consistent anyway, so those plans don't, so thank you. Um, and also it's stated in the planning report that the abutting structures have patios and porches that are similarly sized to the proposed mudroom. Um, there was a point in the planning memo um, that it said not required by zoning, but to explore other roofline options, uh, which um, which we did. Uh, we looked at the, the residential design guidelines, the principle B3, and we went back to our architect, we went back to our general contractor and explored that to, to maintain the front main uh, ridge line rather than do the hip roof. It would, um, would actually result in something we think that would look overly boxy and be less aesthetically pleasing. There's a lot of complexity to the structures in our neighborhood and I wanna go with that sort of cadence of complexity and that hip roof we think would add some, some design features that were positive. Um, and also the expense, we would be adding more steel beams to create a structure like that. And it, it very quickly gets, um, very expensive to do that. So for multiple reasons, after some consideration, we were hoping to not um, do away with the hip roof as it was uh, suggested we consider by planning. And I think that's the job. Any questions? Thank you so very much. Um, I know there was a question earlier about the lot coverage and um, as to whether or not the it appears from the documents that were submitted it appears that the currently the pro the property is in conformance with lot coverage and after it will be out of conformance and um, I had spoken with Mr. Valarelli immediately before the hearing um, in regards to those numbers so I just wanted to go back to Mr. Valarelli because um, I believe you you had rerun the numbers on that, is that correct? That's, correct? that's correct, Mr. Chairman. So as the lot stands, the lot coverage is 22%. Uh, with the small addition, including the vestibule if granted by the board, the lot coverage will still only be 25%. Um, there is no uh, pre-existing non-conforming situation with respect to lot coverage. It's conforming now, and it will be if the board uh, chooses to um, permit the uh, structure. Perfect, thank you. So with that, it really is just a question of um, the, the addition of the mudroom and the porches at the, the excuse me, the mudroom and the, uh, the steps at the front. Um, are there questions from the board? Mr. Revelak. Uh, the increase in lot coverage, that is only from the mudroom, is that correct? Well, really? uh, Mr. Revelak, so no, there's two small little wings to the left and right of the existing porch. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Seven and a half feet by four feet, something like that. Um, three feet by 7.5 feet times mm -hmm. two, 46 feet, plus the vestibule, an additional 63. So mm -hmm. they're going from an area of 850 square feet which includes the structure in the porch to an area of 959 square feet, which includes the little uh, addition on the wings left and right in the mudroom. Thank you, Mr. Valarelli. Uh, that was the only question I had. Thank you, Mr. Revelak. Any further questions from the board? With that, I'm gonna open the hearing for public comment um, as before. If you would raise your, if you'd like to raise your hand, please use the 
button on the participant tab. Um, and if you are dialing in by phone, please use star nine to indicate you would like to speak. Um, the first on the list um, is David Putterman. Hi, thanks for, uh, for letting us uh, come and talk as well. We're across the street neighbors of uh, Brian and Denisa. Amazing family, amazing kids, would really love to keep them in the neighborhood. We actually built a new construction home right across the street at 25. And um, we think the changes that they're proposing not only help continue to uh, enhance the, the features of the, of the neighborhood, but also match a lot of the um, renovations that are occurring. One of our other neighbors down the street recently did a renovation, new windows, new addition in the back. So um, I, I do think it's in keeping with the, the neighborhood. There's not really anything out of the ordinary from, from my perspective, um, obviously, as a, as a layman here, um, but, but really think it would, it would add value and character and, and uh, match very well with everything that's going on on the street. Thank you. Um, next uh, is Sanjay Newton. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, I'll, I'll keep my remarks short. Sanjay Newton, I live at 32 Ottawa Road, just down the street, and um, really would just echo a lot of what, what Dave just said, um, and, I, and I hope you'll vote favorably um, for their special permit this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next up is uh, Alex Keift. Yes, Keift. Uh, we live adjacent to. Yes, Keeft. Uh, Keeft. Thank you, Alex Keift. Uh, we live at sixty-six Iroquois Road, which is directly adjacent on the left of uh, the property, and we also support the uh, proposed plans. We've reviewed it in detail. Um, thanks to Brian and Denise for sharing those uh, with us and feel that it would be a uh, consistent and uh, positive uh, change to the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Um, Brian Kate. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm just gonna echo what everyone else said. Uh, we are direct neighbors to Brian and Denise on the other side. Uh, and you know, we've also reviewed the plans and we uh, believe this will be a functional improvement for their family as well as an aesthetic improvement for the structure and, and for the neighborhood, it's very consistent. So uh, we have no objections at all and I hope that you uh, move to approve. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public comment for this hearing. Um, This is a very straightforward, very simple, uh, very good proposal. Um, I don't think we can condition necessarily that they have to keep the house color because it is a really nice house color. Um, but otherwise, uh, we have our three standard conditions, um, which we would attach that we read at the beginning. Um, and I would also uh, want to add the um, condition that I had before about the, the so the area of the new stair and entry vestibule is not to be considered within the foundation wall of the building. So that would set the foundation wall at the front of the, the major addition um, that coincides with the position of the existing porch. Are there any other discussion from the board? Seeing none, may I have a motion please? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I move that the application be approved subject to the three standard conditions and the fourth condition that the chairman just read into the record. Second. Thank you, Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Uh, vote of the board. Um, those in favor, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Revelak? Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are approved uh, for 24 Ottawa Road. It's submitted with the four stated conditions. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And thanks for all the support, everyone. Thank you all. Okay. Next up on our agenda is just a review of our upcoming meetings and milestones uh, for the board and for those who are interested in joining us. Uh, so we had our regular hearing uh, this evening. Uh, I should bring that up, actually. That one. 
There we go. Uh, so we had our two hearings, our hearing tonight. Um, the draft decision for Thorndike Place, uh, Vin was going to be try to work on that this evening. Um, so over the weekend, um, myself, Mr. Hanlon, and Mr. Revelak each took a third of the previously submitted draft and tried to just make it a little bit easier to read, uh, clarify the numbers, clarify the, the layout, um, just to try to address the concerns that were raised last time. Um, but because of the public meeting law, none of us are allowed to actually recombine it. So um, it was submitted back to the town. So they're taking care of that and they will get that posted up onto the town's website um, with the revised draft decision. Um, and our hearings to our next the next meeting of the board is a continuation of Thorndike Place on Wednesday, October 20th um, at 6.30 p.m. And then on Thursday, October 21st, the following day is the close of the public hearing for Thor Thorndike Place. So we will be um, voting to close the public hearing at the end of the meeting on the 20th. Um, then Tuesday, October 26th, we have hearings for 5 Cheviot Road and 43 Cutter Hill Road. We'll also have continuations for 1416 Edgerton Road um, and 125, 127 Webster Street. And Mr. Valorelli, are there any other hearings for that evening? We may, we may have one more, Mr. Chairman. I'm waiting for a completed uh, package. Okay. I think there possibly could be three. Okay. Is there still time to advertise for that? Uh, the advertisement was done ahead of time. Uh, oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, we were just trying to back into uh, more documentation to support it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then Thursday, October 28th is the first deliberation meeting for Thorndike Place. Um, and then November 9th, possible date. Uh, and then November 23rd is the date that we had or agreed with the applicant that we would try to uh, have our final vote excuse me, on the decision for Thorndike Place, if not before. So those are, those are our upcoming dates. And then, um, so that is the end of our meeting. Thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. We appreciate everyone's patience throughout this meeting. Especially wish to thank Rick Valorelli and Vincent Lee for all their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting, and to Kelly Lanema for preparing the Department of Planning and Community Development uh, Memorandum. Uh, please note the purpose of the board's recording this meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of our proceedings. It is our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be made available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for Mr. a motion Chairman. to adjourn. Mr. Chairman. Oh, yes, sir. Um, a quick, uh, a quick uh, question. I couldn't get to my mute button in time to turn it off. Um, did you say the meeting on the 20th begins at 6.30, not 7.30? Um, that is a very good question because it sounded odd to me when I read it. So let me check my calendar. I know tonight's was 630 and I know that you've been trying to work an awful lot into your schedule. I just didn't know if that was also. You are, you are correct. That was an error. That is at 730 p.m. Thank you. So okay, much thank for you. Sir. That out. Thank you. So Wednesday, October 20th is 7.30 p.m. continuation of Thorndike Place. And then with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Hanlon. <laughs> Not even nine o'clock yet. No. Oh. Anybody want a second? Uh, All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Hey, either. It'll get to be nine sooner or later. <laughs> Voting to adjourn, Mr. Dupont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mills. Aye. Mr. Revelak. Aye. The chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all very much for everything. Good night, guys. Thanks, guys. Good night. Good night, guys. Take care, Bye -bye. everybody. Good job. <laughs>